everybody, welcome back to Pagan's Witchy Corner. My name is Pagan, and today I'm joined by two authors, not our usual one, so it's awesome. We get double the fun today, and they are both the authors of a really awesome book that is called Thrifty Witchery. Welcome, Martha Kirby Capo, hopefully I pronounced your last name correctly, and Vincent, I'm going to hopefully not butcher your last name either, Higginbotham? Is that correct? Wow. Yeah. Wow. You're betting a yes. thousand. That's Yay. great. <laughs> Yay. I butcher everybody's name. So that's why I'm, I always apologize. I'm like, I'm so sorry if I butcher your name. I'm terrible with names. <laughs> oh, everybody always gets my name wrong because it's, it looks like a guitar capo. And and so they all say capo and I'm I'm super used to it. But yeah, oh, you you got yay. it right out of the gate. So that's very I can count on one hand and have fingers left over the number of people who get that name right. Oh my goodness. I it, I that's so strange. I think that um Australia Taylor said the same thing that everybody says her first name wrong. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, how it, it reads how it sounds. I don't understand. I, I guess yours reads capo to me, so that's why I'm like I I don't know. People are strange with names, and that's why I often butcher them because the way my brain sees it is the way that it reads. And so if it's pronounced mm -hmm. weirdly phonetically, I'm like, I'm sorry, it's going to come out wrong. But yay, yours <laughs> didn't. So, anywho, I digress. Welcome to the show, both of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having us. Oh, your book was so fun to read because this is your book was basically everything I try to promote with this show. Um, you know, I try to promote, obviously, do your craft your way, but also do it affordably <laughs> because <laughs> witchcraft can be very expensive if you let it. If you try to go buy all the accoutrement that makes it flashy, uh, basically what I would call Pinterest or Instagram witchcraft. Mm. And when you try to do that, you're going to run up a very large bill very quickly. But if you do it the way that y'all talk about in the book, it's very simple. It's very easy and it's very down home kind of almost like comfort witchcraft because you don't have to go out of your way to make it pretty it's just mm -hmm. what it needs to be and your book encompassed all of that beautifully and I loved it so much it was such a good book and it's a cute book too now granted I don't have the full copy I have a, a advanced reader copy from Llewellyn um so I don't know if, if anything has changed from that copy to the other one other than the coming soon page for about the authors that was the only thing I noticed it's like there isn't anything about the authors so since this is my first time also meeting you and learning about both of you can you tell me a little bit about both of you because um obviously I didn't get to read that yeah sure ladies first Martha oh. <laughs> on the spot um, well um Let's see about me. I am, uh, I was not raised as a hereditary witch. Uh, I am, although there are uh, uh, Gardnerian practices in my witchcraft, I don't think of myself as Wiccan, but I do have some wonderful Wiccan practices that I dearly love mm -hmm. uh, in, in my magic making. Uh, I am, um, I am a person who really feels like um, like, like you should listen to what others have to say in teaching you, like you should go out and, and get some knowledge, but I'm a big wisdom believer. I'm a big, I'm a big believer in, uh, there's a saying that says, uh, knowledge speaks and wisdom listens. So I'm a real listener of what is going on and trying to synthesize that for myself and my witchcraft. So I might, I think, uh, the, the short word for it might be eclectic, although I don't think of myself quite as eclectic, but I, I, <laughs> I want to do what works for me yes. and what works for me may not be what you see in a whole bunch of books or a whole bunch of people saying it may be mine. And I like the idea of having the confidence, uh, in myself to say, you know, this doesn't look like anything else, but it's working for me and I'm going to go with that. I love that so much. We'll come back to that and talk more about that, but we'll give Vincent a chance to introduce himself as well. So Vincent, if we pass the mic to you. Um, yeah, so my name is Vincent Higginbotham. I um, I wrote How Witchcraft Saved My Life, Practical Advice for Transformative Magic. That was my first book. And then this would be the second book that I wrote. And um, I am also not a hereditary witch in any way. I just kind of picked up witchcraft while I was homeless and living on the street for a decade. And then I dabbled for two more decades. And then I finally decided that, oh, hey, this means I'm a witch. So I started calling myself a witch to really like 
dove in deep and just kind of started embracing everything that that sort of entails to me. I love that. I love that both of you kind of um, have, you know, this kind of beautiful outlook when it comes to witchcraft, where you find what works for you and find kind of your craft your way. It's mm -hmm. not a textbook. Mm -hmm. Here's how witchcraft is supposed to be. Um, and I don't think witchcraft is any textbook. I think that the books out there, um, including y'all's, uh, give you a starting point, but it is not mm -hmm. your end point. It, it's kind of that whole, I have no idea what I'm doing and I need the guidebook. Well, this is a guidebook. It will get you to where you're supposed to be, but then you can go and travel whatever path you want to from there. And mm -hmm. I think that that's a beautiful way to do that. Um, I think that the way that you both set that up was gorgeous. Uh, now, kind of backtracking a little bit to what you said, Martha. Um, I like that you said that you're like, I don't feel like I'm eclectic. But technically, if you pick and choose kind of what works for you, even though it's not textbook, that technically is eclectic, which is so awesome. It really is. I <laughs> yeah. know. That, but I, you know, I guess, I guess that's like my own. Um, I, the word eclectic to me has often, like when I've seen it used in the community, it has often kind of felt dismissive. Yeah. You know, like, oh, well, you can't make your mind up or, you know, you're just being, you're just being, uh, you, you, you're just sort of skimming the surface and taking what looks pretty and looks nice, but you're not really diving deep to learn more about where that practice or whatever that came from. And, and I, I do learn more about, cause I'm a big learner. I mm -hmm. like to learn things. And so it's not just sort of, I don't know, skipping through the the meadow of beautiful witchy flowers and just sort of popping off the heads of the daisies or something <laughs> like that. You know, I really stop and look and think, well, what, what was this in the uh, original practice mm -hmm. and, and how did that make sense for them? And how does that make sense for me? And, and I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to incorporate that as a regular part of my practice. I think it's different than, I, I don't think people mean for the word eclectic to be sort of dismissive, but I have, experienced it as that oh and, yeah and so, absolutely yeah i i think the the word eclectic comes a little bit with a stigma attached mm -hmm. that you know like you were saying that you can't make up your mind that you're um almost too adhd and i don't want to you know yeah no i hear har you yeah. harm anybody with that term because i have adhd but it, it's that whole you know thing of yes you can't make up your mind it's like oh well you should pick this path or that path mm -hmm. but when none like you're not serious path, yeah you know? none of the paths call to you you can't pick X, Y, and Z path because that's not your path. Your mm -hmm. path is the one that you forge. And yeah, taking pieces that work for you absolutely is valid. The other thing too is witchcraft is always evolving and mm -hmm. it has to evolve with the times. Yes, we can appreciate what it was like way back when, but it also sometimes doesn't fit into the modern era. So by the time you get around to it, you get to that point where you're like, this doesn't really fit for me because mm -hmm. it's not current in the modern era. So mm -hmm. taking this piece and working with this deity or working with this spirit or working with this plant herb, except whatever you want to call it, it changes. And I think that there was a point in your book that you actually talked about how um, things look differently for you. So I think that you said something about if the color pink was a manifestation of, I want to say money for you, uh, then uh, that's what it should be, you know, changing mm -hmm. what works from tradition to fit you because that's how you see it. And that's how your practice works. And that's how your magic works makes it very valid. And I think we should step away from that stigma associated with eclectic um, terminology because it does fit for everybody in their own way, mm -hmm. shape, or form. Mm -hmm. You know, also, there's something to be said about the fact that, like, there was a time when Wicca didn't exist, and there right. was a time when people were, like, druids because that's what they were raised to do religiously, or there was a time where people were priestesses because that's what that whole culture followed. Mm -hmm. And the witchcraft or magic really because it probably wasn't even really called witchcraft at that time but the magic that they were practicing was not all just one thing like sometimes they used blood and sometimes they used sacrifices and sometimes they mm -hmm. used herbs and you know it it wasn't eclectic because that term didn't exist 
Exactly. So I think that something to be considered when looking at the word eclectic in witchcraft is also that like maybe it's not really that we're going to this place that is new but we're actually returning to a place that once was oh wow oh that's brilliant oh wow that is a great way to put that <laughs> mm-hmm. <Hey. Brilliant>. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really great way to put that so uh kind of bringing it full circle back around to the book what brought you two together to write this book oh this is my part of the interview so <laughs> <laughs> take it away Vinny. So. <laughs> Um, Martha is like one of my best friends at, on the planet at this point. I would definitely say like the relationship I have with Martha is as strong and formidable, if not stronger and more formidable than some that I've had for decades. And, um, that's because I trust Martha and she will tell you that what we have if y'all hear my dog barking, I'm really sorry. The he dog just, just wants that to say hi. Everything. It's fine. We, yeah, we're, cool. we, we like dogs around here. So if the dog wants to join the podcast, that's cool too. Dogs are welcome. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so anyway, Martha will tell you that we have a relationship that um, is filled with perfect love and perfect trust. And I'll let her talk about that in a minute. But how what happened, how we kind of came to is that um, I always wanted to be a writer. And then I, it was suggested to me that I should reach out to um, Jason Menke of the Agora um, and see if he had some space for me to write a blog for the Agora. Well, when I reached out to Jason, he was like, actually, Martha is doing that now. Here's her contact information. So I reached out to Martha and she was like, oh, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Let's give you a shot. And from there, we, we kind of like evolved this really good working relationship where I could say, Martha, this is what I have. And she would be like, I think you need this. And I'd be like, yes, you're right. And so like, we really started learning that we understood each other and that I never had ego when it came to her being like, Hey, what you mean here is maybe this and maybe not this, but this is what it sounds like you're saying. And this is what you're actually saying. And they don't really go together. Mm -hmm. And then like, just kind of editing. Right. And so then I got my first book deal. And I was like, Martha, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm just going to like lean on you and you can kind of like be my second set of eyes. And she was the whole time. Martha is the first person who read my book before my acquisitions editor did. And she was able to go through with me and be like, hey, comma doesn't go there or you might need a hyphen here. But also she was like, Vinny, I think what you mean is this, but what you're saying is this. And this is why it sounds a different way than what you're trying to say. And so with that, like my my message became more clear. Mm -hmm. And then of course it goes to the editor who does the same thing, but essentially like we just built this relationship like that. And then Martha was like, Benny, I think that you should follow up that book on how you're using magic without like money essentially. And I was like, Martha, I think you should write that book with me because I think that you have a message in that too. And she was unsure about it. And I think that she was like, Oh, I don't know. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to give you some space, but just sit on it and think about it for a minute. And then a month later, I was like, so you're going to write the book with me, right? And she was like, okay, I'll do it. So we wrote the book. And then we, um, well, first we wrote like 10,000 words and we submitted a proposal for it. Mm -hmm. And our acquisitions editor was like, yeah, let's do it. And then now we've like, history was made and Thrifty Witchery was born. Oh, that is so (laughs) awesome. I love that you guys have that kind of relationship and continue to have that relationship. I think that is super cool. And I like how, you know, books that wouldn't normally, you know, just kind of, I I like when a book just kind of falls out of the woodwork and it's just Mm -hmm. there and it's like, yep, we're going to write this and this is how this is going to be born. And it's like, I had no plans to write this book, but here it is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Which is so great. So, uh, now, Martha, Vinny said that you were going to take away the, the whole perfect love and perfect trust thing. What, oh, yeah. what does that sound like for you? So for, you know, for it's very for some writers, it's uh, like my book is like my part of like my baby or something. It's connected to me. Mm-hmm. And so if you do anything to the book, you're doing it to me. That kind of a thing. Yep. And when you're when you're co-writing, you have to really respect uh, the other person's voice and and where they come from. And there are some things there's a lot of things that Vinny and I agree on. <clears throat> but there are some crucial things that we do not agree on. Right. 
And so, I mean, we never, you know, it was never a cat fight or anything like that. Uh, but we did have some uh, protracted conversations that were passionate. And I don't mean <laughs> by passionate, I don't mean screaming at each other and weeping or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had, you know, we stood up for ourselves with each other. But it was never about Vinny and it was never about me. It was always about the book and the book is a separate entity. And so perfect love and perfect trust means when Vinny was standing up for himself about something that he truly believed was his truth that needed to be in that book, I trusted that that was going to be able to happen. And I trusted his connection that he has with his higher self mm -hmm. and, and the love that I bear for him as a, uh, a fellow practitioner of magic uh, meant that I could separate what would be happening in the book from what was happening with me and Vinny, like our relationship. We're like each other's riding lobsters. And so like you know, we're, we're, we're ride and die with each other on riding stuff. And the same was true of him. If I had something that I strenuously believed needed to be phrased a certain way or done a certain way in the book, you know, perfect love and perfect trust means he hears me. We have a dialogue about it. We come to a place where both of us can can maybe, you know, it's compromise. You don't get 100% of what you want. They don't get 100% of what they want. But it's not just compromise like, oh, well, I guess, you know, and then you and you leave. It's compromise like, you know, I can live with this. This right. is work for you. And the other person said, yeah, I can live with that. And then we toddle on our way. And that's that was really, I think, something that uh, sings in this in this book is that throughout the book and, and a lot of places you can't tell who wrote what because no, our voices can. are so uh so interwoven with each other because we trust each other enough to go into each other's sentences and kind of muck around in them and and create this sort of amalgam now the places in the book some of them no i didn't i didn't like um benny works with bones a lot mm -hmm. and so the section on working with uh finding bones, cleaning bones, working with bones. I didn't really touch that at all because that's just not my practice. Right. But other parts of the book where, um, you know, where we were talking about um, uh, the intangibles or some, of, or some of the tangibles as well, we really um, respected each other enough and, had, and respected ourselves enough that it's okay. I'm not going to die if this person changes two or three, five, 10 words uh, in this sentence. It mm -hmm. still says what I wanted to say, but it has that other person's truth. And that's what we're looking for. That's a long answer, but that's true. No, that's, that's a beautiful <laughs> answer. And, and as you were talking about it, it, you know, as you said that not everybody uh, or that a lot of people feel like, oh, that's my book baby kind of thing. And that's, you know, my child and part of me. What you kind of described sounds like co-parenting. Mm -hmm. and yeah. you guys co-parented yeah. this book together which sounds perfect in all of its ways and honestly if you weren't talking about a book it sounds exactly like you were trying to give a beautiful description of what co-parenting should look like so honestly I hadn't thought about beautiful. it like that but I think you're exactly <laughs> I think you're exactly right yeah. yeah you guys did a beautiful job and truthfully if there was no way for me to tell that this book was written by two people I would have never known Mm -hmm. You guys meshed so well together throughout the entirety of the book that you couldn't really tell who was who. And it worked out so beautifully outside of, you know, personal stories and all of that. But mm -hmm. um, everything meshed beautifully together. So you guys did a really great job um, putting all of it. I would say both your energies into it and allowing it to flourish into its own being as um, you know, a whole thing that encompasses both of everything that you guys wanted, which was just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Well, and I'll tell you a little, a little, uh, factoid, a little nugget is that we had never even set foot in the same room with each other until after the book was published. We oh, did wow. all of it through, uh, <laughs> through, you know, telephone calls or chats or, mm -hmm. uh, emails well, or things like that. Before publishing, but after it had been written completely, because yeah. we, we saw each other for the first time last summer. That's right. In that's the same right. Room. And it just came out in April. So right. It was after it had been submitted and accepted and we were done with that. And that's when after that is when we first uh saw each other in Mystic South. I we'd never been in the same room together. I'd seen pictures, you know, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. And and it's fun how um, you know, a lot of people say, you know, relationships of the internet aren't real. And honestly and truly, I have some of the most meaningful relationship with people that I've never met face to face. 
Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's so great that you guys were able to, you know, come together and write this book and obviously do all this, you know, being distant, but still you guys made a gorgeous book. <laughs> the imagery within it is so beautiful. And thank you. We love it. <laughs> the The wording that you guys used for a lot of it as well um, makes it not a challenging read for those who are interested um, and listening to the podcast today um, for it's not a challenging read if you're new to witchcraft. If you're trying to figure out where do I fit in, what do I need to do? And if you pick up some of the other books that are out there, they are challenging reads. They are going to make you probably have a lot more questions than answers. This is not one of those books. This book will give you the straightforward information that you need to start your practice and kind of have a stepping stone into whatever you want to do then you can go out and branch out and figure out what you want to do from there. And obviously there's a million and one books you can choose from from that. But uh, this is a really great book to start out, especially if you're somebody that is not sure how you can financially jump into something. And mm -hmm. let's kind of segue into that. Let, let's talk a little bit about what do you think about what? Oh, sorry, words. They all tried to come out at once. Uh, which part of the book do you think is the most important in each of your opinions? If you were mm. going to recommend one specific part of the book to an individual, what would you recommend? I mean, I am a huge proponent for self-empowerment and that's definitely, I think Martha is as well. And that's really what the whole book is about in some way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's the first chapter. So if we were going to say, okay, this one chapter, this one part of the book is the most important or something that a whole nother book could be written on, maybe I would say self-empowerment oh, for beautiful. sure. Yeah. Because I think that that's so important in spellcraft and magic, because I mean, really, what are you doing when you're casting spells or creating magic in some way you are empowering yourself or you know, finding the empowerment within yourself to manipulate the world around you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that is brilliant. Martha, what, what would, would you say the same I thing? Would say, I would say the same thing. And it helps me circle back to something else that I wanted to get back to. And that's the whole yeah, idea of, of being a good, um, a good starting place for building your own practice and not to, not to say that, oh, you know, we're the only people who do this, but I don't think that there are a lot of books out there well, when you get to the end of the book, you feel like you're ready to go. Yeah. You know? And, or if if that was the writer's intention, I don't know that it's articulated as, as uh, uh, clearly as it is in, in this book, in our book, mm -hmm. Tricky Witchery, because by the time you get to the end of that book, you should feel pretty darn confident and, and, and self-confident, self-empowered to... Because um, there's some practices that you can do in the book and some self-empowerment uh, uh, practices, exercises. Um, you should be good to go. I mean, not that you know everything <laughs> and you can do anything and, you know, you are now the great and powerful Oz or something. <laughs> but you should have a pretty good foundation yes, and a pretty good structure that you can feel pretty confident in making some uh, autonomous, independent choices. And so I, too, would say the self-empowerment. It's the first thing. And Vinny was very... Uh, very strong in uh, um, believing that that needed to be the very first chapter in the book. Uh, and that was one of those things that we had a, a conversation about because we're, we're both big into numbers, like mm -hmm. like certain numbers mean certain things for us. And I had to get past this whole idea of, well, no, it needs to be three and three, uh, it, but it was okay for it to be like four and three or however many are in the balanced. Yeah. And, and I think it was right. Uh, I think it was the right thing to do to talk about self-empowerment because I'm not sure that there are a lot of people out there who, who think about witchcraft in terms. Well, I'm going to take that back. I think there are a lot of people who do think about witchcraft in terms of self-empowerment. I'm not sure that they spend a lot of time in that uh, topic, in that subject before moving on to the other, you know, bells and whistles and exciting kind of stuff. And I would also have to kind of agree a little bit with that statement, too, because I think that also there's a lot of witchcraft books and everybody who's listening, we're not ragging on any other witchcraft book out there. Just oh, for the gosh, record, no. we are just um, comparing and contrasting a little bit here. Um, I do think that the self-empowerment chapter is often later in the book mm -hmm. after we've talked about the basics and the tools and everything else. And 
you know, the history. Don't get me wrong. All those subjects are absolutely important. But I don't think without the self-empowerment and the trust in self, you can mm -hmm. effectively practice your craft. I think that those steps have to be almost your first kind of inclination into your journey to witchcraft before the tools, before, you know, the history and before everything else. I think if you have that, then you are set up to do anything because obviously the tools are beautiful and they're wonderful and they're everything that you could use but at the end of the day they're just tools mm -hmm. a hammer's not going to nail a, a nail into the wall on its own it's you that's using that tool to do that and i think all of your tools yeah they're great they're bones they're tarot cards they're you know your athame your chalice whatever you need or whatever you want that's there your herbs any of that all of it is just basics but without mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. it's not that important it doesn't it doesn't have the energy to make things happen without mm -hmm. you yep. and so without that self-empowerment and also that trust in self because i think that there's a lot of times with witchcraft we um we forget to trust ourselves I, I've done I it agree. in the past. I've done it many times. Um, that you, you, you do a spell and you're just like, oh, I don't know if that's going to work. And then sure enough, it kind of works or it kind of doesn't because you didn't trust yourself. So the energy is going to have that kind of distrust in it as well. And so I like that you guys did put that in the very beginning because <clears throat> that is something that I think is really important and crucial for us as witches to understand mm -hmm. that yep. you have to start there because yep. that's your foundation. So awesome. I love that you guys did that. <laughs> um, now, kind of segueing into your individual stuff, what do you guys have going on for your future? Do you have any books in the works? Do you have classes, appearances? Lay it all out for everybody and <laughs> kind of tell everybody where they can also connect with you as well, because obviously people, I think, should connect with the authors and get to know them and, you know, support them. Well, I just turned in uh, my manuscript for my second book, and uh, uh, that's going to be undergoing a magnificent rewrite, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine. I kind of thought it was going to, and boy, was I right. <laughs> um, so um, I don't know when that's coming out. Uh, okay. Uh, but, but, you know, sooner rather than later. Um, we will both be at... Uh, um, Mystic South, uh, which is a conference in Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, toward the end of July. Um, then I've got some, uh, I think we're both uh, headlining at Florida Pagan Gathering, uh, their Samhain uh, um, meeting. And then other than that, I mean, I've got, I've got something in a couple of weeks that's coming up. Um, and, um, and then just here and there, you know, as, as people say, hey, we need somebody to fill in for the person who couldn't show up. Can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I love the impromptu gatherings. Those are always fun. Uh, what about um, you, Vincent? What do you got going on in the future? Yes. So I just turned in the first draft of my third manuscript. I am waiting for um, notes or revisions mm -hmm. or complete rewrites from the editor, um, which I expect anytime now. And then hopefully that will be out in about a year. It normally takes about a year yeah. um, for a book to come out. And then mm -hmm. otherwise, like Martha said, we're both speaking at Mystic South individually. We're not speaking together. So you can catch us both individually at Mystic South. Um, I'm, I know that I'm going to be there that Saturday in Atlanta. So for those who are local enough to come for just a day, Saturday is a great day to be there because, <laughs> you know, I'll be there. Um, but also, also, we are headlining in Florida um, for the Florida Pagan Gathering. Is that what it's called, Martha? Yep, FPG, so Florida Pagan Gathering. Martha is the connector on that one. Um, but that's pretty exciting. I've never headlined anything. So um, I think that'll be exciting. And I um, try to stay active on TikTok and Instagram. I fail at how active I am from time to time, just based off of like where I'm at mentally, emotionally, spiritually, energetically, whatever. I feel um, that in so my soul. Recently, <laughs> I mean, it's a whole thing. You it gotta is. like give yourself <laughs> space, right? Yes. So like I, I gave a really good push before the book came out and then I'm like, no, I need to like, 
you know, I got work going on and I just finished writing a third book. And so I just took a step back and I was like, let me just have myself some mental space for a while. Like I've been off for the last two days and I literally did nothing and I could make content, but I'm not there. So I'm not going to, but I do update both platforms, both Instagram and TikTok with what I'm doing regularly Mm -hmm. to keep people up to date. So you can always follow me on those. Um, I am on Twitter some, but not really. I think I just mostly stalk people there. And, <laughs> I love um, the way you said Twitter. That's just, I'm sorry. Just Twitter has become such a horrible place these days. Just the way that you're just like Twitter. So <laughs> I mean, it's so funny. Like, it's just like, I'm still there, but I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, and I never really was. Like, I just, I get on there to see what else is happening in the world. And then I'm like, okay, that's enough. And I get off of it because it's just such a dumpster fire. It is such and, a dumpster um, fire. <laughs> I just, I don't have the tolerance for that all the time. And I try, but you know, you give yourself the space you need. Mm-hmm. So um, if you're I healthy and have good boundaries. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, um, but I also have a website that if you're ever trying to like find things that I'm doing or you know, want um, to know what was happening most recently in my writing career, you can go to, hold on a second. Pip, hey, that's enough. <laughs> no. <laughs> As I don't know what poor Pip, Pip is the cutest little tiny dog. I just uh, don't know what that dog could possibly be doing. Thank you. Pip got in trouble. <laughs> Pip is in trouble. Come to daddy. Like, and... Somebody like pulled up in our yard and he's like, oh, let me attack. And he's like, you know, if he goes, that's great he goes like near a human he's gonna run away crying <laughs> because he's a chihuahua he's large enough to sit fit inside he gonna of take a that car bucket. down you're gonna take that chihuahua yeah. gonna take that car down. I, I think it's, yeah until it, he gets I, like two feet from it. it it's funny that you have a chihuahua i have a chihuahua dachshund mix and for some reason they have this attitude that they think mm-hmm. they can take on anything but they're also yeah. afraid of their own shadows. Um, mine decided yeah. one year when I was outside in the garden that she was going to take on a herd of deer yeah. by herself. Oh, wow. Oh. And she chased them through the woods. She came back, but she chased them through the woods. And I'm just like, this has to be the funniest thing to these deer. But they <laughs> yeah, were like, oh God, can you imagine? <laughs> there was like I have nine a of them. <laughs> Mine I is have a trait chi- of our trash can. So. Oh, how fun. Like, I have a Chihuahua Papillon mix. And let me tell you, he hates the front door and he'll hear the postman comes to, uh, we have communal uh, mailboxes and they're right on, right next to uh, where we live. And so he'll bark, 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 bark. And I'll open the door because we have a gated uh, uh, courtyard. I'm like, all right, go out there, have a blast. And he's like, oh no, I don't want to go outside. <laughs> right. No. Right. Like they stand there and bark at it. And then you're like, okay, go. And they're like, no, no. <laughs> I just want to stand afar and be really noisy. So anyway, before before Pip interrupted, um, I was going to say that you can find me on my website, vinnywrites.com. It's just okay. V-I-N-I, writes, like writing, W-R-I-T-E-S dot okay. com. So like that has links to my social media and places where you can go purchase the books and just different updates about what's happening. Perfect. And I forgot to put my uh, social media. I'm really not on uh not on the bird app uh and i'm mostly just on uh instagram under the corner crone okay. and then i have a couple accounts on uh facebook one is my personal account martha kirby capo and it's okay if you follow me there that's that's fine uh and then a second account under the corner crone the corner crone which is also uh where i write uh on uh Pathios pagan mm-hmm. the agora uh, although mostly I write book reviews these days. So anyway, that's where I am. I love it. And everybody, I will make sure all of those links are in the show description so you can find them easily and go follow Martha and Vinny all across the interwebs. And obviously, <laughs> everybody, shameless plug time, go buy the book. If you can't buy the book, go to your local library and request a copy. If they don't have it, they will find a copy if from either another library or they will purchase one. So make sure you do that. Also, if you are somebody who is able and you go to your local library, you can also request a copy. If they don't have one, you can donate a copy as well. That's also a big thing. So libraries, support them. Support your authors. I love libraries. And I would also say 
if you have if you have read the book, mm-hmm. if you could leave a review, <laughs> that was uh, my next point yes. as well. <laughs> oh, was it okay? But then you say your thing, girl. <laughs> um, that was my next thing. Obviously, if you can leave a review, um, Amazon, Goodreads, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, everywhere, go just write one review. You can post it across everywhere. I tr- trust me, I do it all the time. So well, can... and it's uh, you just wouldn't believe how helpful it is. I mean, it, it does. just uh, yes. it does something with logarithms or I don't know something. And it just, you just, you have no idea how powerful that is. So please leave a review. Yes. Want to help out your authors magically? Go write them a review. Trust me, it actually helps them so much, even mm-hmm. magically. You wouldn't even know. It's so great. I love doing it. Um, also, if you're on social media and you want to promote the books on social media, please do that. If you're inclined to, obviously, it's not a requirement, but it does help the author. Um, obviously tag them if they're on social media. Like I said, all those yeah. links will be in there. Tag them. They love seeing those reviews. They love seeing all those things. Just do the things, people. They need it. They love it. We love it. <laughs> I love I love pictures that people take in the wild. Like they'll say it's in the wild and it's like oh, somebody yeah. <laughs> is out like in a bookstore somewhere and they're like taking pictures. Like, oh my gosh, look at that. They, they actually did put them in bookstores. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Both I love Martha that. and I are really good about like reposting those too and being mm-hmm. like, thank you. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. I think that Aww. we both love to show our gratitude for that. So I love that. It'll definitely be good for whoever's posting it also. Well, a rising tide lifts all boats, you know. Absolutely. And so, it's true. You know, we're big believers in that. So this has been absolutely wonderful. I would love to have you both back whenever your books come out. If you guys even partner together or if, if you ever just want to come by the show and chit chat about a specific witchy topic, I would love to oh, have sure. you by for any of that. You guys have been wonderful. Um, everybody who's listening, thank you so much for listening. Go check out the book. It is Thrifty Witchery by Martha and Vinny. The book is should be out everywhere. Like I said, even if you go to your local bookstore and they don't have a copy, you can request a copy. Purchase it if you can. If not, check it out at your leisure at your local library. And everyone, stay safe. Take care of yourselves and be kind to each other. And we will talk very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. If you're a lover of Pig and Switchy Corner, then prepare for some really exciting news. I have started a new podcast, Pagan's Reading Nook. Don't worry. I'm still going to be creating all the Pagan Switchy Corner content that you all love. But as you all know... I have a huge passion and love of books, which has led me to create this new show. On Pagan's Reading Nook, I will be discussing the books that I'm reading, showcasing brand new titles, and sitting down with some amazing authors to talk about the worlds and the characters they've created. I will also be discussing new releases, fan favorites, and classic tales that have enchanted us throughout time. So, if you are a fan of this show, make sure you head over there and subscribe and grab your favorite beverage, and join me as we dive into harrowing tales, seductive romances, and thrilling adventures in the fiction world.